And we're back with more Soul Blazer. Today we're going to jump into the model. No surprise it don't make you equip the uh, paintbrush to go into it, but uh, maybe too much of a callback. Okay, enemies here are, as you'd expect, very tiny for the most part. Got the little soldiers. We have archers and... I think... Oh yeah, those little guys in the rocking horses. And most annoyingly, a little bit later on, we've got invisible enemies. Fortunately, about that point, we will have unlocked a creature in the house that should give us the ability to see it, as long as they're within range of my little floating glowy ball thing. Yeah, this area, you're going to find being able to manipulate that orb very useful. Some of these enemies that are just out of reach. In fact, some of them you really can't get up to and hit with a sword, so... It's going to cost me a lot of gems, but... That's what we pay, the price we pay if we want to get to the end of the game. Okay, release the mouse. That one apparently is not too bothered by the cat. Okay. I have to say, though, this model represents a far bigger town than anything we've seen in the game. I mean, I, I do get it. it. You couldn't realistically depict like cities. I think the only game I've ever seen do a really good depiction of a town was Final Fantasy XI. No, sorry, that, that's the online one. Uh, Twelve, where you can see the big buildings and you can just access certain areas in there. It got me thinking, though. I'd kind of like to see a. Um, a game that's sort of Final Fantasy-esque, but with more of a Grand Theft Auto slash Saints Row thing going on. Remember me and Two in the uh, used to work out. He worked out an idea of a a city that was sort of in the middle of a, a, a battle between the forces of uh, technology and the magic. And instead of making you choose, like make a choice, you basically go to every area in there. And fulfill a mission that would serve one of the sides. The more magic in an area, the more you get like giant trees and crystal formations and that sort of thing. Residents who have magical species or magically oriented species like elves and stuff. Whereas if technology took over, you'd see more tech in the area. So like cyborgs, robots, mech suits, that kind of thing. The idea being that there could be possibly a good an ending where you solely choose one side or the other. Or maybe endings where certain endings where you have so much a percentage on each. I don't know. I can't program games. I'm just throwing it out there. I wouldn't mind like a fantasy uh, style uh, or heck even like a cyberpunk style uh, Grand Theft Auto game. Just big open world, big city to play around in. Okay, get more of these guys. One thing about the invisible enemies, if you're really thorough, you don't have to go back for the invisibility thing. It's still a pain. Magic comes in handy though, because again, if you can hit them with magic... Oh. Yeah, it's really easy to miss things in this area. Okay, there we go. Ugh. I really hate it when they do that. Okay. Ah! Okay, got them both. And... Whew! Sorry if I'm a bit quiet tonight. I haven't, haven't got as much sleep as I probably should have. Or... Actually, that's a lie. I've gotten plenty of sleep lately. I've been watching uh, a lot of... Uh, I got a lot of horror series on the YouTube. Some of the ones I've missed the first time around. Uh, start, just watch through Cop Not Sleeping. That was really good. And there's another one. I don't remember. It's called The West Files. That was really good. It's kind of refreshing to see one of these uh, online horror series that wasn't about Slenderman. 
Speaking of horror, I've actually started, I finally got a good idea for a horror story I'm working on right now. Might read the first part of it whenever I'm doing the uh, backtracking episode. That might be the uh, story I read for that. So I probably will go back and do a more proper read video. You know, background music. Probably some appropriate image in the back, or I know, I've always liked like, the flickering candle, but really kind of points out what these uh, creepy pastas are. It's kind of campfire stories for a more modern age. Uh, see right here, I'm in a spot where there's invisible enemies. Now these moving crate things, which are very similar to something we saw in Crusader of Cincy, whenever we can actually see them, they're not necessary to kill because they just don't. They're like just responding enemies. In this case, however, we do need to get by them. Oh, almost got this guy down. Oop. Oh, I didn't quite get it. Anyway, I'm not going to go too far, too much into the horror concept that came over. I will say, it does not involve forests in any way, name, shape, or form. I will say that I was trying to think of something different. Because, like I said, I've loved, I love those horror series. I love the ones with, like, the, the Slenderman Universe stuff, with Marble Hornets, Everman Hybrid. I'm always looking up new ones, and... Even in cases where it seems like they're... It's just something I've seen before. It's still worth it to see how different people have taken it on. But uh, I've noticed that most of the ones online, they're all, like, in the woods, or... In the forests, places that you sort of associate with danger. I want some place. I want to make a monster up that you wouldn't associate. You wouldn't associate it with a place being in a place that's dangerous. If anything, a place is rather banal, and we'll get into that when I start telling the story. Ah, here we go. Oh, good, because I've already gone through half of my gems. Every gem I've collected in the game so far. Okay, this is a quick way back. That's good. Maybe we can go back and get the invisibility uh, guy. I could go get it. I could try without. Ah, we're right here. Let's just go grab him. I think he's one of the doors. Yep. So far we have a door, a fish, an old man. It was the mole? I think it was a mole. Okay, let's hold into the model. Got one more model after this, so. Good news is though, after the second model, there's just a, a short area back in the guts of the house before we get to the boss. Okay, heading back up. Yeah, as you can see, you can see these things are like... I want to say there was something in Crusader of Cynthia that looked almost exactly like them, but you couldn't hurt them at all there. Okay. Okay, I probably best to get to the side here. So just enough invincibility for me to... Oop, get that. For it to wear off right in the right spot. But yeah, I was looking for a, trying to create some horror and something that wasn't such, wasn't in a frightening environment or an environment that we would, as humans, associate with fear. Because you gotta know there's some sort of primal thing going on there. Forests, dark forest at night. The monkey part of our brains is like, oh god, I don't want to be eaten. The only problem is I came up with a title and I, I can't tell you the title without basically ruining what it is. But the thing is, it's it's too goofy. I gotta think of a better title because as it is, when I told somebody else about it, they laughed. And looking back, it's just it's it is a funny title. I just if I was making this a joke story, I could easily keep it like that. But um, I have to think of something. Okay, we got the stairway. This leads as yeah, the attic. Oh, the there's another stairway down on the first floor that we're going to be opening later. 
Okay, we're in the last little section of this. Fortunately, I don't think there's any reason... Oh, well, that's it for those. To go down there, yeah? Okay. I hope this is one of the ones that just clears everything out. Okay. I was getting a hanker into play lately. Um, <laughs> a bit of everything. I'm still in the stage where I've got the PlayStation 4 and there's so many things I've been, I was waiting for to play on that. I just started The Evil Within, for example. Uh, I picked up a copy of Alien Isolation. Oh, picked up a copy of Lego City Undercover, which earns all the points for having a Columbo reference in it. I honestly couldn't believe it. That's... Given that the game itself is sort of a kid's Grand Theft Auto, it's fun. It's fun in that Lego way, but it is definitely tailored to younger people. And to throw a reference from like a 70s crime show is just very weird. <laughs> but you know how it is. The more obscure the reference, whenever you get it, the more you like it. Oh, hang on. I messed up my pop filter. Which is good, because I have a tendency to spit. Patooey! Okay. Just knows how weird the water is. It's just alternating triangles. Then again, I guess it's just a model. He probably used, like, blue cellophane if it exists in this universe. Gotta take a drink real quick. <laughs> Whew, need to cut down on the soda. Okay, let me make my way through this. Uh, what else have I been working on lately? Uh, trying to finish up the Undertale fanfiction, because it's kind of the next thing that's almost done. After that, it's going to be book four of A Dreamer's Night. I like to, I like to alternate. I was, I was doing a thing for a while where I would alternate by the month. But three months in, I kept pushing back the dates for... Uh, it was first just like just a week to finish up. The next month it was like two weeks to kind of finish up. I probably should stick with it, but uh... I don't know. The, the thing about the fan fiction, I know my fans, a few fans I have, they're probably annoyed by um... the fact that I've left, I've, I've got a Dreamer's Night still going and instead of finishing it up, I'm wasting time with a fan fiction. I mean, it's hard not to think of fan fiction to that sort of negative uh, mindset. Especially when you're a writer and you're like, well, I have my own universe stuff to be writing, and why am I even messing with this? And the thing is, it all started with the, uh, the ending of Mass Effect 3. Uh, it's hard to explain. Oh, that sounds like some idiot in a train's passing by my house right now. The thing about train operators is can't get over bon smashing that horn like a friggin' five-year-old. It's like he's trying to empty it. I know they get like... I don't know. I'm probably getting mad over nothing. Okay. Uh, see, I now lost what I was thinking. That stupid train. Uh... I live, like, near two train tracks, so... I cut it, but I'm not that sophisticated of an editor just yet. Working on it. Oh, damn, I don't even know what I was talking about. It's a problem with being absent-minded. Let's see... I think that's the one that does the... Either has the catnip we need to get the cats out of there, or it's the um, uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, is it the one with the catnip, or it's the one with the um, healing herbs? Because one of these plants will drop healing herbs for me. Healing herbs for me. So hard not to call them healing herbs. Oh, yeah, the fan fiction. That's what I was talking about. 
but yeah, the Mass Effect 3 came out and the ending was so lackluster, so... Well, from what I understand, it's exactly what it seemed like. Like, instead of having the entire writing team who built the rest of the game on it, just one guy forced everybody out and wrote his ending. Because of that, it seems like they've missed key... It seems like they missed key themes. They completely ignored other aspects of the story in favor of what he wanted the story to be about. Yeah, I'm kind of pointing a finger at Casey Hudson here, but, uh... In truth, I don't even know if that, any of that's true. All I know is that the ending was disappointing. Which is a shame, because honestly, the idiot should have been able to make this, uh, should have been able to put that story, give that story a pro proper ending. We all know what we wanted. It's just like a big rush, big fight. All the forces we've gathered to that point, fighting our way to the big teleporter thing. And then friggin' uh, fighting like an evil, like an even corrupted version of the elusive man. He's turning into like a giant hulking abomination. Then when it's done, you've got so many seconds left. You go turn on the machine, the, the crucible, set it to go. But oh no, we have so much time to get out of the citadel. We've got to run, and everyone runs, and it looks like Chipper doesn't make it. But at the last second, he pulls it off. I don't know, I just... As much of a B action movie ending that is, that's... I'd rather have a successful B ending than a pretentious... than an ending, an A ending that comes off as overly pretentious. And that's what we got. And that's the shame. It's a shame. The new ones are really good, though. I did... Uh, I really dug the heck out of it. Kind of disappointed that EA might be putting that series in the back burner, especially when, especially when I, all, all I've heard from it is that oh they're going to be making both the Battlefront. No, oh, I could not care less. This one it's always bugged me since the day that the multiplayer started becoming more important than single player. It's just that, oh, huh, this is the catnip. Okay. But yeah, um, just when it started happening, I just was afraid it was going to come a day where you start seeing a ton of multiplayer releases, but nothing for the single players. I mean, Overwatch could be a fantastic game. And I wish they had done it in a similar vein to uh, Warframe, where it was a team, and it could you didn't have to necessarily be working against uh, other players. One thing, whenever they both came out, I was actually looking at Battleborn. I, I probably should pick up Battleborn. But, uh... Because that's what it was. Four-player co-op. I'm just not a multiplayer guy. I don't like playing PvP online. For one thing, most of the... Well, I, I, that's generalizing. But a lot of online players don't know how to handle winning with dignity. If you, that makes any sense. You probably understand what I mean. <laughs> Oh, okay. We got another chest. Might have something in it. Uh, God, that's terrifying. Yeah, a little bit. Remember that next time your door creaks open creepily in the middle of the night, it's just exercising. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Well, this trick, you gotta get them out of one of the doors, but I don't remember which door it is. It's just kind of tricky to do it. I can't expect them to have super, like, put a lot of time into pathfinding for the cats. I just... Okay, there we go. Maybe this build, this one here. Get them lined up perfectly, maybe we can get it done. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be working here. Um, nope, you're still following there. Oh, the great door who's joining. Okay, I didn't realize he was a great door. Who might have questioned his powers? Okay, we need to get the cat out of that room now. Come on. 
Well, the cats, they're just sort of inhabiting the same place in space and time. Quantum cats. Insert Schrodinger joke here. Okay. That gets them out of the way, so we should be able to get through the mousetrap area now. Yeah, we are now with two models. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Got something for me. Maybe he's got one of the more, another master emblem. Getting rid of the cats. Take this. Oh, magic. Spark bomb. Uh, I vaguely remember this. I don't remember using it very much, though. I think it kind of works like the ring one. Where it kind of puts a... A point down that says damage a second later. Hey, you gotta get XP somehow, buddy. Okay, and... Ah, Medical Herb. Excellent. We don't have to go to another level to do that. Okay. I think we're pretty much ready to go down to the last area now. Got the good sword, got the good weapon. And yep, there we go. We just gotta go down. After we save. <laughs> In any case, going back to the whole fan fiction thing. It's like, it's like well, well, I wanted to. I liked playing Mass Effect 3. It was just the ending that stung. So I was like, okay. A lot of these, like, a lot of people who at the time, like a lot of the uh, Casey Hudson themselves, was like, oh, do better. It's called. If you think you can do better, fine. Do better. I don't know if he literally said that. I'm just saying. <laughs> that was sort of the attitude EA had. It was basically, well, if you don't like it, let's say you do better. Fine. I'm a novelist. Writing is what I do. I did, however, have a set of provisos. See, I want to be able to play Mass Effect again. I needed a way to rectify the ending as it was. And still feel satisfied. So I could still feel the characters there got what they the ending they deserved without changing the ending at all. So that was for rule one. I had to go with an ending. I naturally went with the destroy ending. Because quite frankly, if you've ever heard me debate about the others, one of them's evil and the other one is really creepy. <laughs> One of them is basically turning the universe into Cybermen, and the other one is... I can't remember. I isn't really solving the problem, because sooner or later they're just going to regain control. Either regain control or corrupt the mind of the one who's trying to control them. Okay, fair enough. So... Uh, second one, I did not want any of the main characters in the story to be main characters from the original. In a large point, I solved this by making it take place about three or four hundred years after the Citadel trilogy, which actually puts it between the series, oddly enough. Oop. And the third, and something I was glad to see that, um, heck, even the designers of the EA took advantage uh, ended up doing with the new one. The uh, main character is not necessarily a soldier. Or it could be a fighter, but they're not necessarily like an alliance fighter. Uh, the difference is there is I made it a uh, I made the pilot, the main character of a uh, mine a uh, pilot. That was something I kinda wish they had made. I, I could have totally seen like a Mass Effect Starfighter game. You play as like a well, it's like, like like the X-Wing games. You play as like someone in one of the small fighters and you bring squadrons to attack other topics. You can cover all sorts of stuff, like the war between the humans and the Turians, uh, like the Krogan Rebellions, all sorts of stuff. There's tons of fun things alluded to in the game. Where you could totally make a, uh, a space sim, uh, space fighting sim. Okay. We're getting pretty close. There's the, I don't think there's only two screens for this. So, I'm gonna watch these stupid spike balls, which 
Okay. Uh, that that's really annoying. Okay. Okay. Get the some experience. And I only meant the Mass Effect fan fiction to be one thing, one story, and I was gonna move on. I was like, okay, I'm gonna rectify the ending. And then I'll be able to play the game again <laughs> and not feel like I'm being cheated. And then I can like go back to focusing on my normal work. Because there's this really I didn't ever finish it, but there's a really embarrassing Neon Genesis Evangelion fanfiction. Don't bother looking for it, I destroyed it. You're never gonna find it. <laughs> Let's just say it's not my immortal bed, but it's, it's damn near close. And let's leave it at that. <laughs> Funny thing is, I never even watched all the way through it. You know, just sit and go, yeah. I had the barest idea of the story. Oh, here we go. Boss time. And this boss is... This reminds me of the golem from uh, Secret of Mana. He's not too bad, but he's kind of... He moves around a lot. It's really hard to avoid taking damage on this one. As usual, it's best to catch him with the edge of your sword. Other than that, basically wait, wait for him to get into a spot, smack him a few times, and start moving. Even then, you're going to take damage. This is one where it's, it's not really easy to avoid taking damage. Okay. Almost got him, though, so... Now I've got a healing herb, so... Okay. Well, that boss is over. <laughs> and release the doll. And she has the purple stone. Which means we just need one more. Okay. Well, that's the docks area finished. It's kind of a shame. Like I said, this is my favorite area in the game. Now that you finally get the metal sword to beat all the other monsters from the previous levels, most of them anyway. But, the, the, like the music of the factory itself. And it just overall seemed a little more imaginative. And what you had to fight, what you're bringing back. Next area is actually the castle, I believe. And eh, that's a little more traditional, but it is also the last area we're rebuilding, so. And let's see. Okay, so... Oh, wait, the cities were destroyed. That means people died at, before he made the deal. That's a shame. I bet that's how he got them. Like, he was, I'm gonna give you a gold piece for everybody. Not mentioning the fact he basically destroyed most of the city, so... <laughs> you consider how many people we freed? He got a few hundred gold pieces. Yeah, yeah I think the demon gypped him. Up, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to use that kind of language. I just, you know how it is. Still, I think the the demon cheated him. It's strange how sometimes words pop into the, uh, your vocabulary. You don't even really think of the source. I never even really associated the word uh, "jip" with gypsy. I, then again, one of the movies I grew up with was Babes in Toyland, which has a big musical number called We Are the Gypsies. Oh, well. Let's see. Oh, time to move to the next area. Which we will hit next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.